Hey folks, welcome to SLIs, SLOs, and Error Budgets at Scale. I'm excited to be presenting here at the first ever SLO Conf. I think I see a couple of folks in the audience there I know. All right, let's get to it. So I'm Fred Moyer and I work at Zendesk, providers of awesome customer support software. At Zendesk, reliability is feature number zero. If we can't serve our customers, they can't serve their customers. At Zendesk, I spend a lot of time working on SLOs and error budgets, which we use to measure service reliability. We've operationalized SLOs in our production systems now for over a year across dozens of services and around a thousand engineers. So let's take a look at how we did it. Quick overview of what we'll be going over. You know, first the problem statement, then the formulas and implementation details, and then we'll talk about why histograms for latency is the way. So, you know, how do you implement SLOs uniformly across a thousand plus engineers? You know, maybe 1,500 at the end of this year. Um, so we had to make, you know, formulas to do this and make them simple um, because we wanted everyone on the same page. And to start this off, I did some initial research using you know, some of the canonical books, you know, the SRE book, the SRE workbook, and the, you know, recently I read through uh, the implementing SLOs to kind of update what we're doing. And I found that these were great comprehensive overviews, but when I dug down, especially in the SRE workbook, to the details of formulas for SLOs, I found out that in a couple of cases, you know, some exercise details were left for the reader. And that's where you know I turned to um, Liz and Seth's video from I think about 2016. I thought that had a really great means of tying in SLIs to SLOs from you know uh, a formula perspective. And then there's also the latency SLOs done right series of SRE constant SRE con presentations you know given by uh, Heinrich Hartmann. Uh, Principal engineer at Zalando, uh, Theo Schlossnagel, um, founder of Sirconis, and you know, quick disclaimer, I gave a version of that also. So I found that was great work for actually you know digging into the details. And SLOs done right is all about the details. So let's get to it. You know, let's talk about the formulas and how we actually calculated those things. So to implement um, SLOs for you know thousands of engineers, we start with the SLI. And that's really something that delineates good requests from bad requests. If you read through the Google SRE book and the SRE workbook, they have a different interpretation of uh, SLIs, which is a measure of how your service is performing well at any given minute, which I thought was basically a metric. And that didn't really make sense for us to, to implement. So I, I went back to Liz and Seth's video and I, I took their definition of SLIs. And so, you know, if we all know that a good request is one that a user is happy with and a bad request is one that makes your user unhappy, whether it be like, you know, a browser pinwheel or a 500. So how can we codify these definitions? So here are a few example SLIs, you know, some for latency and, and one for availability. Um, but let's break these down and see what, how we can parse these out. So each of these I broke down into a metric identifier, a metric operator, and a metric value. You know, a metric identifier is something we collect from the service. You know, it could be you know HTTP response code or you know page latency. And then we've got an operator, which you know basically every monitoring system has. And then we have the metric value, which is actually what is collected. And let's put this all together. You know, this is a formula that I was able to hand out to our engineers and said, you know, when you make your SLIs, they need to look like this because what we're going to do is take these and embed these in SLOs. And let's get to that. So what are service level objectives? They're binding targets for SLI. And I stole that statement directly verbatim from uh, Liz and Seth's talk. How can we express that as a formula? Well, for request-based um, SLOs, it's the percentage of good requests over the total requests over a time range. And that time range is very important, as we'll see. So let's take a look at how we can break that down into a formula. So this is a com the same examples, um, but the SLO versions of them. You know, we've got what I term a success objective. You know, this is, you know, the number of nines that, you know, are in your service objective. And then we're going to embed the SLIs that we created previously in those. You know, as mentioned in Liz and Seth's presentation, SLIs inform SLOs, and that's what we're doing here. Simple stuff. Now, our SLOs also need a time period, and without this, the SLO is meaningless. 
you know, if I talk about, you know, 95% of requests served in less than 100 milliseconds, over what time range is that? Is that a time range of, you know, one second or is it a time range of one year? And I've seen so many SLO examples, you know, that neglect this and they just don't work without this. SLOs, you know, in some ways, they're math equations and contracts. You can't just leave the time period off them and expect it to work. So to put this one all together, you know, we've got a success objective, an SLI, and a period. This is the formula for SLOs that we used as a template that we told engineers, you know, you need to have something like this. And it's nice because we could just take this and drop this into Datadog, which is our monitoring provider. And, you know, once we had this, you know, we get our error budgets for free. We basically, you know, take that success objective percentage and subtract that from one, as we see here. So same type of format, you know, we flip the, uh, you know, we flip the success objective around, you know, one minus that, and we get, uh, we get kind of this terminology and we embed our SLI and we've got our time period putting it all together. You know, we have the error budget with the SLI and the period, you know, just flipping the SLO around. And so, you know, let's step back for a minute and, you know, kind of see what we've done here to democratize SLOs. We've done simple examples, real world examples, examples that are easy to reference and that we can hand to engineers and say like, what you come up with through your service should look something like this and you should be able to parse it like these formulas. And those formulas, you know, because we structured uh, these SLOs like that, we can take those, you know, the SLOs that our engineers create and we can essentially just drop them into our monitoring solution. And we have to be explicit about this. You know, these are essentially, you know, contracts and math formulas. They don't work without a time range, which is the most common thing that I found left off. You know, everyone knows what a success, you know, everyone knows SLO has to have, you know, three and a half nines or something like that. Um, and they also need the well-crafted SLI. So we tried to be very prescriptive on these so that all of those thousand, you know, or 1500 engineers a year from now is on the same page. Got it? Good. So let's move on and talk about histograms for latency. And as the Mandalorians say, this is the way. So there's uh, a couple different types of histograms that I've seen um, used in the wild. Um, the first is log linear high dynamic range histogram um, developed at Circonus and now available as openhistogram.io. And I consider this to be an exemplar, the best of breed. You know, there are multiple language implementations. Um, you know, the uh, error bounds on the bins are, you know, very well known and you get, you know, um, a really uh, a good statistical approximation of the values. And, you know, if all possible, I recommend that you use this. Um, there's also the Prometheus cumulative histogram implementation. Um, this one I'm not as big of a fan of um, because you have potentially high errors with some of the uh, pre-configured bins like the exponential bin ranges um, that I've seen. I think that's in core DNS. Um, and you can, because it starts at infinity and walks down from there, you can have high cardinality if you've got you know, a non-normal distribution, which almost all latency representations do. So at Zendesk, we came up with this thing, which is basically flipping the Prometheus one around and calling it the inverse cumulative. It use met uses metric tags and it's easy to implement in a monitoring UI. A quick visual representation of these, um, you know, if you represent the bins with metric tags, you can see the log linear, you know, you select a, one specific bin. Um, cumulative, you know, you specify all bins less than infinity. And for inverse cumulative, we flip that around. So we specify all bins that are less than that value. And what does that look like in a monitoring system? Well, here's how we implemented it in Datadog. Very easy to just drop in, you know, we drop in, you know, GT 10,000, which is 10,000 milliseconds. We say here that, you know, we want our SLO to be under, you know, 10 seconds, and then we set, we set the objectives and it calculates the error budget. So that was very nice to have. And, you know, putting this all together, we had something that's easy for users to implement. And that's it. I hope this information is useful. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. And Zendesk is hiring observability SREs. Look us up if you'd like to work with great people. Thank you.